So welcome to my Facebook Live. Tonight, it's an event that I wanted to put together so that we could talk a little bit about uh, my journey in all of this called self-care. Um, I had a little bit of music there to give us a little bit of an environment, but now that we're getting started, I might switch it over to something a little more zen. Um, okay, so let's get started. Although I kind of like that other music. Let's just keep that one going. Yeah, it was fun. And I, I'm feeling the Friday night vibes. So I kind of want to just go for that. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the things that we care about and that we want. Okay, so to get started a little on what it was that I was going to talk about. Um, wait. The music is still distracting me. <laughs> Give me one second. Let me think of my playlist. I'm looking for my playlist here. Music is important. It sets the stage. So I regret not having thought of this before, but actually I don't regret it because I didn't have time before. So <gasps> yeah. Oh, I love that one. I'm going to go with that one. Definitely the best music ever for what I'm going to do today. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about my journey. Um, COVID changed everything for me. Uh, one thing that really completely changed with COVID was how I lived my everyday life, how I did everything. <laughs> you know, it completely flipped my world upside down. So first of all, uh, to tell you a little more about myself, I am a teacher and uh, I teach fourth grade immersion in elementary school, of course. And uh, I used to work at, it, at the building uh, and I, I'm breathing deep because just going back to all of, you know, March last year is hard. It is hard and it's an ongoing conversation with myself on how I can continue to remember that and not see it for all of the hardship that it was, but see it for the hardship and the amazing and the wonderful and, you know, the lessons that I learned and all of that. But that's still a process and I'm, I'm on, on the middle of that. Um, but, you know, thinking back at March and before March, my life was completely different. I can say for sure that I was not completely there in the sense that I was stretched thin in so many different ways that it was it was really hard. Um, I, apart from teaching elementary school, I'm also very active in my teacher union, which is something that I'm personally very proud of. Um, I also have a family. I have two kids. You can see them over here. They're here on the bottom. Um, I'm gonna bring these up so that I can share them with you. So I have, this is Liam. He is, oh, the thing is not letting me show you very well, but Liam is 12 years old. He turned 12 this December, last December, 2020. And Julian is about to turn seven. So my two kids are incredible people. But they also require, you know, their attention and they require you to be organized and to 
manage so many different things at the same time, I was stretched thin. I'm going to be very honest. Um, I didn't know how to do this in a way that I could be the best at everything unless I was sacrificing myself. And I, when I talk about sacrificing myself, I talk about not having time to wash my face, not having time, you know, I had to schedule in a shower. Um, I had to figure out how I was going to sit through lunch, eat and work at the same time so that I could do all of my work at the building and not have to take stuff home. Um, and so when March came around, all of a sudden we were home from one day to the next. I mean, I didn't even have a chance to say goodbye to my kids. And I was afraid that we were going to have one more week and that was going to be it. And then we were going to be home and that not even that we didn't even have that. We were sent home on March and, you know, that last hug I gave them on Friday was the last that I saw my students for that year. So that was a big challenge because after building all of those relationships and having everything come together in a way when, you know, when March get, comes around, you hit the ground running and you get through that learning in such an amazing way because your relationships are already there and your kids know who you are and they, they kind of, you know, feel you and they understand you. So when we were sent home, I had no idea how to do a Zoom meeting or a Google Meet. I mean, I had been looking at it that last week that we were in the building because I was like, okay, kids, if we need to communicate, we have, we need to have a plan. And we were talking about that, but you know, we were so far away from knowing any of that or using any of that, that they, those tools were restricted on my students' accounts because we had no need for a Google meet or anything like that, or a Google voice, or I had no idea that even existed. So for me, it was, it was a big deal. And so I am the kind of person that when I'm thrown into a challenge, I go like, okay, you know, my adrenaline starts pumping and I'm like, okay, we have a challenge. We have a crisis. What are we going to do right now? What is the first step we're going to take? How are we going to keep people alive in this? How are we going to manage all of the different things? And I just, my brain just goes on overdrive and I can do it. I can get through a crisis. But by the time summer came around, I was really tired. I was exhausted. Um, I was sad because I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to my students um, in a way that, you know, the way that we usually say goodbye, which is still gut-wrenching. I mean, I cry every June and that last bus ride when we go outside to the bus corral and we say goodbye, I cry. So, you know, for me, it was a big deal that I didn't even have that. But at the same time, I felt that the moment needed me to just pull through. The moment needed me to just be okay with that because even when I couldn't fill my bucket of closure, I was safe. My students were sent to the best place in the world, which is their home with their parents. And we were all in this together, doing what we could to stay safe. So in that sense, I kind of feel like, you know, we needed to step it up and we needed to just gut up, do it. and not say goodbye and that's just how it happens how many people have terrible accidents and they lose loved ones and the loved ones you know they didn't get to say that last goodbye it happens every day so for me to be going through that is nothing i can see them tomorrow you know what i mean i can see them later it's just that i can't see them for now and that closure is still pending it's in my to-do list but it will happen at some point if i keep myself safe so summer came around and I started working with a hundred different things, including um, helping my district plan for distance learning and what would that look like and how we needed to make it better because 
you know, we, we didn't really know how to do any of it in the spring. So after the summer was drawing to a close, you know, I usually have my summer time and I spend it with my kids or I book a trip to Puerto Rico to see my family. They are already like the, all of them are there. And I was super sad because I couldn't get to do that in March. March spring break was going to be the first time I was going to travel back at that time um, and then go back maybe in the summer or late in the summer. Um, but then with COVID, you know, everything was shut down um, and I, I didn't feel bold enough to be able to go on a trip on an airplane. I still don't feel safe enough to do that. Um, especially with my parents being older people and um, having conditions like medical conditions that I know that if I expose them to COVID, you know, it could get them really sick or they could die. So I basically was here at home and it has been the most eerie thing ever because I'm here at home. I'm literally motionless. I can't go anywhere. But it is the time where I read all the distance learning books. I met 500 times in a week with people. I had never gone to so many meetings in such little amount of time. You know, it was a time where my brain was in such an overdrive that I just couldn't get it to stop. So school year starts. I asked for an accommodation to work from home because my husband has a health condition. I have a heart condition. And, you know, I really felt my heart condition causes anxiety by nature. So I think that I got stuck into a really bad anxiety feedback loop. It was really affecting me. And um, I have an anxiety disorder because of my heart condition. And I felt that, you know, I, I wasn't really feeling well in itself with the situation. I could not think of what it would look like if I was sent back into the building. So I was given an accommodation to start working from home. Even when I feel that that was a great choice and that that was something that I had to do for my health and my family's health, I had no idea <laughs> what I was doing or how I was gonna do it. So first things first, you know, I knew relationships were going to need to be at the front of my brain every day. And I think that that was something that I built on really well with my students this year. Um, but in all of that work, one thing that got really lost was me. Um, I couldn't keep track of, because my two kids are also doing home learning, distance learning at home. so. You know, sixth grade, first grade, I have fourth graders. My husband is working full time as well from home. I'm working full time. I'm inventing while I'm flying. And then I get assigned two new courses that I wasn't going to need to teach to my students and that I had never taught before. So I'm doing all of this new thing of teaching online. And I'm also prepping for two additional classes. Um, and I'm not saying that because I couldn't do it or it was too much. You know, it, it is the moment. And the moment was calling for me to be brave and to say yes to things even when they were hard and to figure out my balance. Because this, this is, you know, I feel like a pioneer. And we read books about them now and we go like, oh, they moved and they went here and they went there. and. You know, they did all of these things and we see it as a, as something that they kind of knew how to do already and they didn't. So I see myself as a teacher pioneer. I am in the middle of this uncharted territory and I have a group of people that depend on me. And so when you have that level of weight on your shoulders, the one thing that can get lost is you because you're taking care of all of these other things. You're making sure that if fires come up, you put them out, you know, or you, whatever. And, and I kind of lost vision of me and of taking care of myself. The other 
angle to that is the fact that I was getting up in the morning and I wasn't going anywhere. So <laughs> pajama bottoms were a thing. They were <laughs> my favorite thing for the first three weeks. Anybody that has ever worked with me knows that I like to dress in a way that I express myself. I like colorful and I like combining things and I like, you know, it's my way of armoring up for my day and, and being ready. And so I felt all of a sudden that that too was gone. I didn't need to wear anything special. Um, all of a sudden, I didn't need to take that shower and run out the door with half a toast in my mouth because I was late to take the highway. None of that was there anymore. So all of a sudden, it's like, okay, so when am I taking that shower? I don't have that crunch time. I don't need to do things running anymore. So for me, I think that that, that part was one of the hardest parts because all of a sudden, you know, I've been without a shower in four days. My students are taken care of. My family is taken care of. Everybody has eaten three meals a day, which we are prepping at home, you know, but I haven't looked at myself in the mirror in a week. And I'm looking at myself through a camera, but I am not taking time for me to just look at me, you know? I am taking time for everybody, but where in all of that do I love myself? Do I care for myself? And one thing that kept popping up in my social media was, you know, if you're so tired as a teacher, self-care, and they throw that self-care in your face as if it were a band-aid that you can magically put on and walk on and you're fine, you know, oh, I self-cared today, I'm good, everything's perfect. No, that doesn't work that way. Self-care is like brushing your teeth. Brushing your teeth is self-care. And when you don't have a routine anymore, brushing your teeth can go away too. How do you figure out where in all of that is your time for you? And yes, you do need to schedule time for yourself but it's not something that you're doing because you don't want to go out the door and raise your arms and see, you know, have people smell <laughs> that you haven't taken a shower. There's no social pressure anymore. So I thought, you know, at around October last year, I was already three months in. I had done conferences. You know, I, I, I had told myself, make it to conferences, parent-teacher conferences, and after that, you can figure it out. And so I made it there. I felt successful. I had established my community. I was, you know, my parents were my team and they still are and I love them for that. Um, but then I thought, okay, I can slow down now. I can really get comfortable in this new space and environment and I can start to think about me and what I need and where I come into all of this. So. That's where I decided, you know, I figured out if I'm going to do anything, it needs to be for me. If I am going to fix my hair, it needs to be for me. It needs to be because I am going to love looking at it the way that it looks. If I put on makeup, it needs to be because I want to feel that makeup on my body. And so I started with this process of, it wasn't a struggle, but it was more of a choice. Like, when do I put on some makeup? And then I, I started venturing and I kept seeing a good friend of mine, Anita. She worked with me when I was starting my career and it's like, it's like life is a cycle and it's beautiful because she was with me at the start of my career as a teacher, 
and I got to see her working and learn from her. And now, in this point where I'm starting over in a different way, she made it back into my life again. It's beautiful how, you know, everything just aligns itself in a way that, that it just does, period. And so I decided, you know, I would see her pop up on my screen from time to time in my social media. Um, and I really wanted uh, to see how I could probably do what she was doing because she was just sharing what she was doing. She was like, hey, self-care matters. And she was sharing how her hair was changing because of products that she was using and um, how she felt so proud of herself and so beautiful in her own skin. And I thought to myself, you know what? Now that I'm in this journey and that I have decided and I have come to this point where I need to do things for me because I'm isolated for, from everyone, you know, and I live with and I'm, I'm working and living with the people that will never judge me. It's my comfort zone. So how do I continue to build on myself as a person? So the first thing I did was I decided to read stuff. So in my reading, I came across a few books that were really good. Um, I also decided that I'm not going to stand by things that happen to other people and myself anymore as people of color. So I had been already working towards that, but I kind of reaffirmed myself in my commitment to building a better future for our kids by eliminating colonial thought and eliminating racism from, you know, our society, our communities. So I became an anti-racist and in that sense too, I decided that I, the first thing that I needed to do was to free my own mind. And so I started reading books, I started doing that and that was pretty cool. But then I, I thought to myself, you know, how about I also do something for me where I am taking care of me because in that journey of self-discovery and anti-racism, you also need to take care of yourself. You will be confronted with so many different things that have happened, that are still happening, that will really weigh your heart, that you need to be able to step from that, take a few steps back, take care of yourself, and then get back in there. So the first thing that I did was that I reached out to Anitza and I said, you know, I'm interested, I have curiosity. And I was really worried because I had bought products from other people before and I don't know, I was concerned with not having control over what I wanted. And that's something that was important for me. Um, usually when you have um, like, I've bought Avon products before and stuff like that, you know, people recommend things to you or you have to have an in-between person. And I didn't really want that. I wanted to be able to see for myself the different products that, that they were offering and to see what I wanted, what I wanted to look like, what I wanted to do with my body. So, you know, I reached out to her and, uh, and she's like, these products are really cool. They're great. And, you know, I said, but do they work? And she sent me pictures of how her hair was completely different, how her hair looked more beautiful, softer, with a lot more shine. And she said, I'm here for you. If you need anything, just reach out. And, you know, I was like, well, where can I find these? And she said, that's easy. You go to my, my website, you can order them there. And easy peasy, you'll get them home. And when I saw that I could just go with this kind of a thing, the same way I enjoy doing like Amazon, <laughs> Amazoning things or Etsy or stuff like that, where I can just go in, check it out, read the literature, decide for myself, and then order them without anybody else really being on top of me or anything like that. I was so relieved. I was genuinely relieved. And I felt like, okay, this is awesome. And so I went in and I looked at a few things and I was like, okay, this, this looks pretty neat. And I read the descriptions on a few things and I'm like, no, I don't need super repair because I, my hair was really long and 
I had a lot of split ends and I had to keep shortening it because of that. But I do want to be able to grow it out again and have it be taken care of so that I don't have those split ends and that I don't have um, those issues anymore. And so I bought my first products, which were the shampoo and the conditioner. And, you know, I was just giving it a try. And so after, you know, the whole process of getting those sent home to me, I had no idea I was going to be this excited over taking care of myself. And so for the first time too, it was just me time. And I had completely not done that in a long time. <laughs> I've forgotten how to have me time. Because me time would be going shopping or it would be going to the gym or it would be going out to dinner and all of that is gone. So how would I figure out me time when all of the things that I did, I couldn't do anymore or I didn't feel safe doing anymore. So when the box came, it was Christmas all over. <laughs> it was at mid-January, you know, nothing special. And then when, when the, the first package got here, I was like a little girl. I opened things up, I smelled, it didn't smell a whole lot. So for me, that was like, oh, I love this. It smells clean because I don't have a bunch of smells. I can just put perfume on and the perfume is the stuff that's gonna smell. So I went, took my first shower, and instantly I could feel my hair just transforming. It was like it was softer, like all of a sudden it was lighter, and I was like, oh, this is cool. I might do this again. And it was, it was pretty neat, because then after I finished, um, taking care of, of like styling my hair and everything, it took less time for me to style it. That is the truth. It took less time for me to style it. It took less heat for me to style it. So I didn't need to like put on the super hot heat and like with the diffuser thing, not the diffuser thing, but there's like this little piece that you can put on the blower, on the tip of the blower that concentrates the heat on. I didn't need to do any of that. And it was like, that for me was the first indication that, that this was a great, great product. I even turned to Jamie and I'm like, hey, look at this. My hair is completely dry. It has its own little wave. I don't need to use my curling iron. And I'm done. It's 20 minutes in and I'm done. So for me, that was like super exciting. Lo and behold, I kept using the products and I kept seeing my hair changing and changing until the first time I went into the building, everybody had something to say about my hair. They were like, your hair looks so beautiful. Your hair is so shiny. And I was, I couldn't believe it because I hadn't shared any of this with anybody. And I think, you know what? Part of it is not just the product. Part of it is how I have changed, how I take my time to really just, and I schedule it because I still have three meals to cook, I still have my whole learning system to put up every day. I have, you know, I'm still building while I'm flying. Don't get me wrong, this hasn't gotten any easier, but I can actually carve out time and I purposefully carve out time to just take my shower. You know, I'm excited to put music on and I go in there and I'm, you know, putting my products on my hair and I'm just, being purposeful with being present, everything else needs to go away. It needs to melt away. Now, I gotta tell you, the first time I did this, it was really hard because <laughs> I have three people that are in my house and those three people are nurtured by yours truly, particularly two of them. And for them to see that my door was closed that I was sitting in front of a mirror, that I was not paying attention to anything in the world except giving myself some time, that was hard for me. I had mom guilt, but I forced myself. I was like, no, I need to be strong on this because if I take care of me and I give myself my time and I put away everything else in the world and just keep this moment present for me, it'll make me a better person. I'll be in a better mood. I'll go out the door and it'll be like, hi guys, I miss you. And I wanted that. I wanted that for them too. So <laughs> the first few times 
it was a little bit hard because they would knock on the door or they would go like, hey, have you seen this or have you seen? And I had to really be like, hey guys, I, I'm busy right now. I'll help you in 20 minutes. It's not like I was taking three hours. I was just taking my half hour to get my hair done and to really just be there and just love on myself. So lo and behold, now I not only after all of this pandemic and being in this environment, teaching from home, you can see my space here that I've created where it kind of looks like a classroom. It's not a classroom, it's not a home office. This is the corner of my bedroom. So if you can imagine that I really have needed to be flexible and stretch myself in ways that I had never done before, but at the same time, I'm empowered. And now that I'm incorporating this little time for myself where I am purposefully taking time, you know, I am sitting with my book or I am taking care of myself and then maximizing other times so that I can really get everything that I need to get done, get it done. You know, I, I feel like I can do anything. I can do anything. And one of the things that really drove it home for me was the fact that I can feel this good about myself. And yes, I've put on weight. I'm going to be very honest. I put on weight and I am cooking more than before. I'm getting burned by my stove and my stuff. But at the same time, I, I can do this and I can do hard things and I can feel good about having done all of that and still put it away and just be me. Because in those little pockets of time where I give myself some time to read, to take care of myself, to take my shower, to wash my face, to put on the cream, to and all of that, I don't need to be a superhero. I can just be me. And that's okay. And that's the comforting part. I don't need to be anything more than just Diana. And Diana giving Diana some time. So... To close this off, this is going to be a first. It is a first for me. I had never done anything like this before, but I think that it's time that I bring all of this out and that I share this with people because in all of this loneliness that we are all experiencing, we need to be together. And the best way that we can be together is, yes, another video. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. Because maybe nobody's like you didn't see this at the moment where i recorded it but you'll see it in a week and it it will lighten up the day and that's what i want i want to bring stuff in here in this space where i can just talk and share and do all sorts of different things so coming up i am now a monet market partner so if you're interested in knowing more about any of the different things that I talked about of the hair products or skin products, you can definitely reach out. Number two, I also want to bring in more of this where I can just make videos, talk to you, talk with you and have an opportunity to just be and share space. And number three, what else was I going to say? Yes, I am going to start other videos that are going to be titled bold hard conversations and in those bold and hard conversations i am hoping to be able to have conversations with people that i care about people that i love about hard topics where i can show people how we can have these conversations with people that we care about and open up the door so that we can bring healing not only back into our hearts back into our country we need to heal each other. We need to heal as a community. But that has to start, you know where? Inside us. And everybody's in their own place. They're in different spots. But as long as we keep walking towards the goal, which is feeling like one community, we can all feel better, okay? So, big kiss. It was great to have done this tonight. And I hope you have 
a fabulous good weekend. Bye. Let me see. Where where do I do this now? Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, found it. Newbie pro